You are listening to the CMQ Investing Podcast. My name is Chris Franco, and in this episode, you will learn some time-tested wisdom from both Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, specifically five mistakes to avoid making as an investor. And what's unique about these mistakes is I uncovered them from the dark ages of Berkshire Hathaway, that is, in the years before the annual meeting was video recorded and transcribed. And it was made possible because of a book called University of Berkshire Hathaway, which, by the way, was a great read and I highly recommend it. Now, before we get to the mistakes, I just have one friendly reminder. If you have yet to follow the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please take a second to do that now. That way you will get all the latest episodes as soon as they are released and you can use the information before anyone who, well, doesn't follow the podcast. The first mistake we want to avoid as investors is false precision. Buffett claimed that it is a terrible mistake to think that things out of a computer are precise. If you have to carry it out to three decimal places, it is too complicated. Munger added that the worst mistakes are made from the nicest graphs, and what is really needed is enlightened common sense. Knowing your limitations and the limitations of your information seems to be the key. Or as Keynes said, I would rather be vaguely right than precisely wrong. Okay, the next mistake we want to avoid is making macroeconomic predictions. And this is so relevant to right now. I get questions all the time about the macro factors. Now, this description of what Warren Buffett said begins with him talking about his Coca-Cola investment. So keep that in mind and let's listen to what he has to say. Each day, the average person drinks 64 ounces of something. In 1991, 25% of those 64 ounces were soft drinks surpassing water as America's number one beverage. Now, just have to jump in here. This is, uh, I think, preceding the obesity crisis <laughs> in the United States. So this means that about 730 soft drinks per capita per year are consumed, of which approximately 42% are Coca-Cola products. Worldwide consumption shows remarkably similar patterns, and the number of soft drinks consumed is rising continuously. Buffett noted that this illustrates why he pays so little attention to macroeconomic factors. Owning the right business is the key. Buffett noted that it is far more fruitful to decide whether a product can sustain itself rather than make economic predictions. Okay, mistake number three is timing the market. When Warren Buffett graduated from Columbia University in the 1950s, both his teacher, Benjamin Graham, and his father told him that it was not a good time to get into the securities business. The Dow had just surpassed the 200 mark. Buffett had $10,000 at the time. If he waited... He claims he would still have $10,000. Munger put it this way, We're predicting how people will swim against the current. We're not predicting the current itself. I find Buffett's story stunning because the two people who most certainly knew Buffett was one great swimmer, or investor, discouraged him from entering the water because they were concerned about the current, and the current being the market. Even Ben Graham succumbed to the seduction of making a market call, which illustrates just how difficult it is to focus on identifying great swimmers instead of predicting the current. The next mistake to avoid is price euphoria. Buffett noted that many investors illogically become euphoric when stock prices rise, and they are downcast when they fall. Ask yourself if you've ever been there, because I know I have. This makes no more sense than if you bought some hamburger one day, returned the next day to buy more but at a higher price, and then felt euphoric because you had bought some cheaper the day before. If you're going to be a lifelong buyer of food, you welcome falling prices and deplore price increases. So should it be with investments. Now for the fifth and final mistake, which is also my favorite. Drum roll, please. Over-reliance on past data. As Buffett summed up, and this was in 1989, by the way, if investors only had to study the past, the richest people would be librarians. In 1993, Munger noted that many analysts look at huge bodies of past data looking for clues, which results in enormous misspent effort. And he says it's generally proportional to the IQs of those doing it. The danger of relying on historical statistics or formulas is that you end up betting on a 14-year-old horse with a great record, but is now ready for the glue factory. So I want to recap these five mistakes that we need to avoid, and then I'm going to share with you what I find to be a really important lesson that you can take with you after you finish listening. The five mistakes, according to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger from the dark ages of Berkshire Hathaway, are as follows. False precision, focusing on the macroeconomic factors, trying to time the market, 
becoming euphoric about rising prices, and being overly reliant on past data. These are five mistakes you can add to a checklist, and I recommend doing that, and you look at that before you even consider making an investment. One of the big patterns of investing that I've discovered over the last few years has been, you know, the best investors focus on making fewer mistakes than the rest of us consistently over a long period of time. It has a compounding effect. Warren Buffett has said that in investing, we don't have to do anything very smart. We just have to avoid doing things that are ungodly dumb. Charlie Munger has said that he doesn't have any wonderful insights that other people don't have. He's just avoided idiocy slightly more consistently than others. I hope this episode helps you do just that. I know these lessons have helped me a lot, so like I said, I hope it does the same for you. If you have any feedback or content requests, you can leave that at cmqfeedback.com. My name is Chris Franco. This is CMQ Investing. Thank you for listening. Thank you for following, and we'll talk soon.